think I know what I'm going to do. Okay, so hey you guys, welcome back to another alternative factuals video. Uh, as you can see, I have the camera to my face and forgive my ashy hands. I have been washing my hands um, quite frankly um, often um, due to this whole situation with you know COVID. Uh, not even I'm not gonna say that Rona, but um. But yes, I want to give you a video. This is a little easier to edit, you know, once I kind of put the footage in, you know, DaVinci or Adobe Premiere or whatever like that. The video is a lot easier for me to kind of output and kind of just edit as I kind of go along. I've said that before, live footage is a lot easier to um, kind of edit, but setting it up in my situation, um, well, in my case, is it's a little bit more tedious because I have all the lighting and stuff put away. But um, before I dive into any of those details and all that stuff, um, before I dive into the details of this video, please be sure to like, share, and of course, subscribe. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you're feeling. And without further or do, let's kind of just talk about something that isn't specifically related to the you know Black Lightning TV show or even the Falcon and Winter Sol um, Soldier um, TV show. This is something I simply wanted to do because I think a lot of people don't really talk about it enough, and that's just simply black superheroes in general. And often, um, and often, a lot of cases, the biggest problems with black superheroes. And before some of you think like, what do you mean, like the biggest problems? with black superheroes i'm mostly referring to the fact of you know how they're written how they're portrayed and a lot of the characteristics that they share you know throughout the course of you know whatever publication history that they come from whether it be like i said image comics or marvel comics or dc comics just in general how they have progressed over the course of time and how sometimes yeah things have gotten better with black characters but also just in general why we don't see enough black characters on shows like Black Lightning or, you know, enough black characters on like in movies or, you know, part of the, you know, the mainstay of comics like DC Comics and Marvel Comics, why they're still kind of underrepresented because there are a lot of black people out there. There are a lot of people of color in general out there, but specifically there's a lot of black people out there. And I think we deserve to have not only just more superheroes in general, but overall we just need to have better written superheroes and we're not just, you know, a very specific type. A black person or superheroes or we shouldn't come from a specific type of background but um here we go so i want to discuss something um well i want to kind of draw back to a video i made like a really long time ago i don't even think it might be public anymore it might be like unlisted so i'm pretty sure you might be able to find it on the playlist or whatever like that but um i wanted to talk about blue marvel adam brashear um well, if you've read the the legend of Adam Brashear, when they talk about his backstory, how he came into existence, um, I kind of went into the details of the publication history, who made him Kevin Graveau, um, who created the character, I think it was back in 2009, if I remember correctly, the, the legend of Blue Marvel. Um, don't quote me on the date, I'm pretty sure it's 2009, but um, regardless. Um, Blue Marvel is one of the most powerful black characters to ever really come into existence, and I mean it in such a way that... Um, the reason why he's so powerful, the reason why a lot of people even, you know, register him as someone who's like, I guess, relatively Omega level or the chance of being beyond Omega level is one, because he was able to manipulate matter and antimatter. And he initially came into existence, according to the comic book continuity, as a black man who was a superhero who had to hide his identity because he actually was a superhero way back in the 1960s. And... For those of you who may or may not know, even though this is American history, even though this is more, I guess, fundamental for people of color like myself, but um, I would say the reason why this is more fundamental is because back in this time, this is a point in time when obviously segregation was a thing. This is when racial tensions were, I guess, relatively considered at its highest, even though I would say slavery was far worse than that, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. But ultimately, at the end of the day, he was a superhero who had to hide his identity, not because he felt like, you know, his family would be in danger, because ultimately he was just too powerful to be messed with. But at the end of the day, he was just a black man. And over the course of, I think it's a limited um, limited series, but um, I think it was 12 issues, if I remember correctly. It might be six. But um, at the end of the bit, basically, you find out that over the course of time, he did come into battle with someone who was, you know, relatively powerful, but obviously didn't stand a chance against Blue Marvel and his mask ended up being torn off and the world saw he was a black man. Now, the issue with this was the fact that Blue Marvel at that point was forced into retirement and then at that point he could not be, you know, a superhero anymore because people were afraid. A black man who's that powerful, who, you know, ultimately is more for his people than he is for his country in the long run, because don't get me wrong, he saved people, but nonetheless he was born black. 
That is who he is besides his powers, besides anything else he did. Him being black was above all else. And people did not want to see that, especially back in the 1960s, like I said, according to the comic book continuity in which Marvel introduced um, this whole Blue Marvel situation. Now, the reason why I'm calling back on this is because in a lot of ways, um, this was very reflective of the real world where a lot of comic book characters, you know, were created way back in the early 1900s when it came to Superman, Batman, you know, uh, Barry Allen, all these characters came to existence way early in the 1900s. Um, basically when we were just discovering a voice and comic books were brand, brand, brand spanking new. And when we finally started to get kind of representation when it came to black characters like Luke Cage, like I said, Blue Marvel, uh, John, um, John Stewart from Green Lantern, Black Lightning. When we started to get these characters in the 60s and 70s, you know, at first they all were introduced relatively the same way. Where a lot of them were like, you know, get your hands off me, job turkey, blah, blah, blah. We were all talking the same as if we could not communicate properly outside of, you know, the slang that we may use with each other. But... I'm calling back to it because, like I said, it's really, really relevant to a lot of the situations that we have going on today, where, um, in general, the reason why a lot of these comic book characters kind of fall to the wayside, like Static, like Black Lightning, have, well, has, because the show has kind of revitalized his character a little bit, but the reason why characters like Static, like Black Lightning, like Jon Stewart, and the reason why some of these characters did never got really the show time or you know, the time of day that their white counterparts did, even Icon, for example, who was actually written to be more powerful than Superman, at the end of the day, the reason they never got the time of day that they did was simply because they were black characters. And no matter what DC or Marvel may tell you, don't get me wrong, these are people who over the years have definitely tried to strive more and be more inclusive of everyone in general because I think we've reached a point in time where they can no longer avoid it. But um, at the end of the day, they had to be more inclusive, but at the point in time I'm referring to, I would say 2010 and before, we never really got the time of day and we only got like small shows like Static Shock, which show, um, showcase, you know, yeah, we do have the numbers when it comes to demographic, when it comes to those TV shows and, you know, the show wasn't canceled because of low ratings because people love those shows, but just because they were black superheroes and people are afraid to see that kind of representation in media because look what happened with Black Panther. The movie, I'm going to be completely honest, I completely enjoyed the movie. I enjoyed it completely, 110%. But the movie was not, let's, let's say, as good as like The Winter Soldier, for example. Uh, Captain America Winter Soldier. That's by far one of my most favorite, you know, um, MCU movies like out there, even including like, you know, things like Endgame. And, you know, like I said, I, I find them in favorite. Um, I find them my favorites in different ways. But I'm saying that's one of my favorites because it's like more of an espionage, a little bit more relatable because Captain America, yes, he has enhanced strength. He's, you know, super strong, whatever like that. But he wasn't like Thor levels of strength or Hulk levels of strength. It's a little bit more relatable. It was more of an espionage kind of spy movie. But besides the point, that was like kind of my little mini rant. Mini rant. But um, these movies were ultimately just a lot more enjoyable. But the reason why Black Panther did as well as it did straight off the rip for that weekend and continued to do so months and I think even, you know, a year or two after the fact was simply because we showed up in numbers. People of color, not even just black people, there were plenty of, I went to go see Black Panther with uh, two friends who were Dominican who identify as Afro-Dominican. Um, they actually saw the movie with me, we all went as a group, and we showed up in numbers to support the movie. And not only did we show up in numbers, but we did so in a way that made Hollywood realize that, yes, there are definitely more people who want to see characters of color in general, which is what launched the whole concept of Shang-Chi, you know, Asian characters, even though that I think that's more tied to, you know, money related reasons and the fact that, you know, China is one of the largest contributors to the whole uh, box office um, situation when it comes to money making. But like I said, just it helped launch situations like that when it came to other minorities outside of those who were of European descent, aka Caucasian. But um, the, like I said, these are one of the biggest issues we suffer with black characters where even if they have good ratings, even though if we have the numbers, even though we have people who are watching these shows in a lot of ways, we are suffering because at the end of the day, you know, we're still relatively the minority in the country, supposedly, even though pretty soon we're not going to really be, uh, it's not going to be that case anymore. 
which is why a lot of people are starting to get upset because we're starting to become more prominent when it comes to showing ourselves and you know people wanting to be more part of our culture when it comes to you know this things like dances uh music more and more people are getting involved in our culture because they like the way that we do things and they like we make the struggle look good at the end of the day that i'm just going to put it as simple as that we make struggling look good we make struggling look fun people are making money off of the fact that you know we've had to endure so much but like i said we have done it so well that people just seem to enjoy it so much and they want to be a part of that culture even when they are descendants or people who come from you know other families who have ultimately hurt us as people but um I mean, yeah this is more like i said a mini rant um i'm not really not necessarily even a rant really i would just say mostly this is me talking to you guys um these are things that we have dealt with in the past when it came to these situations when it comes to these black characters and when it comes to writing black characters and how you know these black characters have, have influenced life but also how in general how these black characters have you know been a reflection of what life has been like for us and for those of us who have been you know comic book nerds of color and you know us seeing more black characters when it comes to the um tv or movies and stuff like that but anyway, you guys let me know how you feel about this uh, type of discussion. This is something that wasn't anything uh, specific, but more or less just something I see in the comments more and more as I kind of release these videos. You guys comment more about you know black culture and how black culture has affected comics and how comics are not always reflective of the representation that we deserve. But let me know what you think. Let me know your opinion. Remember, this video is only to open the you know discussion floor to let me know what you guys think and what type of videos you want and type of discussions you want from videos like this or my channel in general. But um, you already know the, the deal. You know, please be sure to like, share, and of course subscribe. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you're feeling. And I actually hope to see you later on. Peace out. You know, part of me actually just wants to include like a little blooper thing. Like, I'm over here using my cinema camera. Like, I got this thing connected. Able to use my phone and like kind of record, which is really dope via Bluetooth. But, eh, I'll see how this goes. But, uh, I don't know. Like, this Rona thing over here got me having like, not necessarily nightmares, just like, Definitely that paranoia is kicking in for sure. Not for me, per I don't know, kind of for me, because I think other people's paranoia is rubbing off on me. Ah.